No, man, I'm excited. Training camp starts this week. That means we got clips to break down. Aaron Rodgers goes on a podcast. Pardon my take. Let's take a listen to some of the clips and break down our thoughts. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! All right, training camp starts this week. The players report, I believe, tomorrow. Fans get to have their first practice on Thursday. I'll actually be at the practice on Saturday with Richie. So if you guys want to go check us out, make sure you flag us down. Looking forward to it. We've got some clips we get to break down. But before I do, I want to remind you guys, myself, O'Leary and Greenbean are doing the group buy for Jets Broncos. If you guys want to come out with us, hang out with Tailgate Joe, get the tailgate included, drinks, food, music, and go on the field following the game. Make sure you check the link in the description stuff. Tickets on sale for that. Uh, and the Talking Jets panel's back starting tomorrow, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock every Tuesday over on the Talking Jets channel. So if you guys want to get your Jet news, hit us up over there. Boys and girls, let's talk about some Pardon My Take podcast clips. Want to break down some of what Aaron Rodgers said. The first thing we'll go into is him missing camp because it was the biggest story in all of sports. The two mandatory practices that Aaron Rodgers missed. What did he have to say? When I was in the NFC North and playing for that team mm -hmm. uh, years ago, there used to be a real thing called mini camp where it was uh you had one of them usually sometimes it was right after the draft but either way it was five practices in three days friday saturday sunday so two practices on friday two on saturday and one on sunday now it's not mini camp like they can arbitrarily put a tag on whatever week of otas they want so yeah this is the mini camp week which makes it somehow more mandatory than the other weeks um but this it's it was an ota schedule that's how it's you know how uh, words can be a little deceiving from time to time. You can make a story out of the fact that I missed a mini camp when it was really two OTA days. Right. Interesting. That came to the first 10. So, right. So this is a media thing. This is a really interesting argument from Aaron Rodgers and one that I hadn't really considered but makes a lot of sense. He talks about how when he was in the NFC North playing for the, that team, the Packers, they used to have mandatory camps just after the draft or in, in spring or whatever. And then there would be these non-mandatory ones in the middle of the summer. And then, you know, they'd go off and he calls them not necessarily real practices. And there were two, I believe it was unpadded practices, I think is what it was for mini camp this year that he missed. He was on a trip to Egypt that was a reportedly planned prior or in advance. But it was really weird because Tyrod Taylor had no idea he was going to be the starting quarterback for OTAs until the morning of and and coach sala kind of had this you know oh we knew about it ahead of time but no one said anything to the media ahead of time like you could have really nipped this in the bud early early on and it didn't have to be a story like if rogers came out and said hey i'm going to all the like non-mandatory voluntary camp activities and that's going to be my de facto otas but i'm going to miss you know, the two days of these unpadded practices. I think fans and, and the media probably would have been like, okay, yeah, look, I guess that makes sense. You're still going to get fined because of the CBA and everything, but it, the logic checks out. I would rather have my quarterback here for the 10 voluntary workouts than the two mandatory ones that are just sort of like, it, it's more of a semantics argument, I think. So I, reasonable. I, I, you know, I hadn't really considered it that way, but I really like it. And I, look, I was not concerned about Aaron Rodgers missing two practices. The dude's got a zillion years of football built into his body. There's no reason for him to be, you know, for us to be concerned. He's been literally at every single voluntary workout since he got to the New York Jets. So literally the biggest non-story. So good, good argument from Aaron Rodgers. Then we got to hear a little bit about what his plans are in terms of how many years he'll keep playing. We have heard little bits here and there. Oh, he wants to play two more years. Maybe play more years. We didn't really know. There was the one year of him maybe retiring, then he comes to the New York Jets and there's all the speculation. So here's what he said on part of my take. How many more years? I don't know, I'm not sure. This one for sure. This one for sure. I'd like to do, I wanted to do two good ones and to give us a chance to retire a Jet, you know, win two Super Bowls. Yep, yeah, that'd be yep. Great. and then do the Kyle Orton. Yeah. Is, that how, walk off. Is that how you sure. retire? Legend, of course. Just yeah. like yeah. take take a sip of uh, of psychedelic tea and just disappear in the locker room. Oh, I like just that. Just fade away. It's all an illusion. Yeah. Rainbow, rainbow body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was Aaron Rodgers ever real? Yeah. He he was was just, I'll be happy to say no. This is a simulation. So what is yeah, right. what is yeah. Exactly. What are we it, No, about? you're right. All right. So first and foremost, yes, we are in a simulation. That's the only explanation for why we are getting screwed left, right, and sideways when it comes to our New York Jets. The only thing from a statistical standpoint, it is a near impossibility that we could stink this bad or have good things ripped away from us so frequently. So yes, Aaron Rodgers, I agree. We are in a simulation, but to the meat and potatoes of this point, he's saying he wants to play two good seasons. Definitely this year. He's non-committal. He does not, not saying he's going to play beyond this year. And he said that multiple times throughout the course of the offseason. Obviously, a lot hinges on this season, this coaching staff, 
do they have success? If they don't have success, this coaching staff is probably out and Aaron Rodgers is probably out as well. So they play well. Maybe they get a Super Bowl. Maybe they just go far in the playoffs, whatever it is. Then he'll come back for 2025. And a lot of the contracts that we signed this offseason have kind of aligned with that two-year window anyway. Not to mention some of our young stars, that window does sort of align with when their contracts come up and big money starts to hit. So two more years is obviously what I expect out of Aaron Rodgers. I think we get him for 2024 and 2025, and the rest of it is up in the air beyond that. I really think as long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy, we are going to be playing meaningful games later into the season. There was a few other funny parts from this uh, podcast. I think my favorite one was Aaron Rodgers is 1-0 as a starter for the New York Jets. That is a, yep, that is true. <laughs> he played all of four snaps and it counts, right? It's like baseball. You get the win if you you play. I think that's how that works, right? I don't know. I'm a football guy. Either way, you know what? I'm just happy football season is starting. Training camp is right around the corner. Boys and girls, I want to hear your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers. Do you think he plays one or two more years? What did you think of the commentary in terms of him missing the mandatory training camp or mandatory OTAs over the course of the offseason? Hit a green heart down below. Comment a green heart down below if you made it this far in the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets! J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets!